It's continuing to happen, folks. It's continuing to happen. The Hosea prophecy is happening. I, Reverend Gary just got this to me this morning. Uh, Minnesota. You know, Minnesota is known as, we, we say sometimes it's the, it's the state of, of 10,000 lakes. Well, Minnesota has been hit with the Hosea prophecy. The heat is being blamed for it. Thousands of fish have died in about 15 different lakes in Minnesota. Let me read. Heat is what they're now blaming. You know, it's amazing to me. Every time there's a, a fish kill, you know, uh, in Redondo Beach, California, when 7 million fish came to the banks and died on a beautiful blue, beautiful day, they said a storm somewhere in the ocean must have frightened them, and they all went running to this one marina. 7 million of them and died. Whenever uh, several thousand fish died in a lake in Germany, they said, well, there were people swimming out there and they might have too much urination. What? That's not going to do it. When there, whenever there was 28,000 fish that died in Ohio in a river there, they said, well, there is a sewage plant 19 miles away. Folks, when 5,000 blackbirds fell out of the sky in B.B. Arkansas, they said, well, there were firecrackers. It was the New Year's Eve, bringing in the new year. There was a few people having a few firecrackers. So the next New Year's Eve, God does it again, this time with no firecrackers. They're still scratching their heads. What I'm trying to tell you is, they don't know why. When 212 cows fell dead in Stockton, Wisconsin, I said it's the Hosea prophecy. The media said, no, they found one moldy sweet potato in the corner of a field. That must have been what did it. No! Folks, now we're going to blame the heat. Tomorrow, next time, it'll be the cold. Nobody wants to admit that they don't know. Toxicology comes back and there's no, no toxins in the water. There's no disease in the fish, the birds, or the cattle, the bison, the deer, the elephants in Zimbabwe. The hippopotamuses in Zimbabwe. No, no, no. Let me read. Heat is blamed for the fish kills in southern Minnesota lakes. The recent heat wave is being blamed for the killing of thousands of fish in several southern Minnesota lakes. Most of the lakes are shallow and thus more susceptible to summer fish kills. Really? Then that means every lake in America, 56% of this country is in a drought. That means we're going to have massive fish kills all over America, right? Wrong. We're going to have fish kills. It don't matter if it's sunny. It don't matter if it's snowing. It don't matter if it's frozen. It don't matter if it's boiling. It don't matter what's going on. The Bible says the reason we're having this. I'm going to read it again. I know, I know you're tired of it. I know you're tired of reading it from the Bible. I know you're tired of it. I know. I know the Word of God says it. Matter of fact, when I wrote my book here, the Hosea Prophecy, what I did, this is right from the Bible, right from the Bible, the verses say these words. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord is a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there's no truth. This is the reason. It's not because of heat. It's not because of cold. It's not because of fear of a storm in the middle of the ocean. It's not because of firecrackers. It's not because of urine in some lake in Germany. No. The hear the word of the Lord, says Hosea, chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and 3. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there's no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing, lying, killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish, with the beast of the field, with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Hosea chapter 4, verses 1, 2, and three. Zephaniah, if you go to Zephaniah, the prophet Zephaniah confirms what Hosea was saying, but takes it another step further. I'm just going to go there real quick, since it just popped in my mind again. But Zephaniah says these words 
in the first chapter, verse 2 and 3. I, God says through the prophet Jeremiah, I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. Did he just say man? I will consume man and beast. I will consume fowls of the heavens and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks with the wicked. Hello, evil. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. Now, God is sending us warning after warning after warning. When are we going to finally say we have a problem and it's sin? We have a problem when we don't care that gang violence is raging through America and young men are gunning down young people, each other, in the cities of America. We have a problem when we're hit 60 million aborted babies and not one tear is dripping from the eyes of the American citizens. We have a problem in America when we have spiritual wickedness in high places. And where the laws and the Constitution of America is being literally shredded before our very eyes. And those nine judges that sit in them long black robes, are they really bringing justice? Are they really interpreting the Constitution? And what goes on in the halls of Congress? What's happening at the White House? And do we really understand the drug problem we have on the zombie apocalypse? You can blame it on bath salts if you want to. I'm going to tell you it's demon activity. It's demon spirits. In America, how many of our little children are going to be abducted off the streets? How many young girls are going to be sold into sex slavery? How many, how many, how many murders will go on in America as people try to cash in on life insurance policies? as people hate one another. And the Bible says because iniquity abounds, the love of many will wax cold. But you say, preacher, I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to know anymore. I'm tired of hearing about it. You better get over it. And you better understand something. We're living in the last days. Don't plug your ears now. Clean out. Get an ear irrigation, if you will, spiritually begin to hear what the word of the Lord is saying. And I know we got some mockers and scoffers. And every day or so, some of them pop their head up and say, you know what? The world is the same as it's been forever. It, nothing's ever going to change. We've always had earthquakes in diverse places. We've always had volcanoes. We've always had uh, tsunamis. Nothing's ever going to change. You are, pro you are fulfilling prophecy yourself because you are mocking and scoffers will come in the last day saying, where is the promise of his coming? From since the fathers fell asleep, all things have continued as they are. But Jesus said these words as he sat upon the Mount of Olives in Matthew 24. And the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, tell us, when shall these things be? Man, I can hear my coffee over there perking away. When shall these things be? Tell us, what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're on the brink of World War III. We're on the brink, I guess, of Psalms 83. Maybe Zechariah 14. Maybe, just maybe, the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood, who is fulfilling biblical prophecy here of the Antichrist spirit that's flowing through the land in the Middle East, as it says in Daniel 11, 41 through 45. Just maybe, just maybe, we're getting ready to see the positioning of Ezekiel 38. I'm not saying it's going to be Gog and Magog next week, but I'm saying the countries are getting in position. The Muslim Brotherhood's getting into power. People's hearts are turning cold. People's hearts are against God. They blaspheming the name of Jesus. They're crucifying the Son of God. And, and look, same-sex marriages, Episcopalian Church approved in Indianapolis, Indiana. Same-sex relationship blessings, they call it, in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is right in the heartland. Are you saved? Are you saved? Give your life to Jesus, please. Please let me help you if you want to send me a 